Hey, what's up everybody? This is Gigi from Comic Wow at Baltimore Comic Con 2014. And I'm so excited to be joined by another female amidst the comic industry. This is Marguerite Bennett, who is a very well-renowned comic writer. And so you may know her from things such as Sleepy Hollow going on right now. That's gotta be such a coup. Were you a fan mm -hmm. of that story at all I'm growing up? I was an enormous up? fan. And I mean, like down to like the, like the old Disney uh, Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Uh -huh. <laughs> like it's, this is a long time coming. Oh no, I understand. <laughs> Mr. Toad was one of my favorite rides at Disney World. I was definitely stated when they took it away mm -hmm. so but yeah and actually my dad mm -hmm. has even said that that Ichabod Crane was one of his favorite mm -hmm. stories growing mm -hmm. up so what is that like like take us into that place where you mm -hmm. find out that you're gonna be part of this mm -hmm. and the people you're gonna be working with mm -hmm. and like to so someone who's pretty new within the comic industry I mean how long have you even been doing this um just over a year um, yeah the first comic came out on July 31st 2013 that's tremendous <laughs> tremendous and was that yeah. Batgirl uh -huh. was um that, that was the Batman annual with okay uh, yeah Snyder. right mm -hmm. okay fantastic so again take mm -hmm. us back so where do you find this mm -hmm. out how do you go about mm -hmm. like what's the whole um, breakdown well it actually started at San Diego Comic-Con last year uh, there was a Grant Morrison panel that I was just dying to see I'm a huge fan girl of his and it was right after the show that I'd never heard of called Sleepy Hollow and they're gonna be airing this pilot and so I thought you know well, if they don't clear between rooms and I'm gonna be super crafty and like slip into this TV show you. and stick around and then I wound up falling in love with the pilot <laughs> And it was just really devastating. I mean, it was so charming and so fun. And, it, you know, it was scary, but it was campy and it was exciting. And it was just, it was just so compelling. And I was just, I was, I was done. I was done. <laughs> I mean, it's just got to be the most tremendous feeling. Mm -hmm. Like, especially, and mm -hmm. I mean, that speaks to, I think, a woman's mm -hmm. instincts. Is it's like, I'm going to go after it. Everybody thinks that the males are the go-getters. Mm -hmm. But like, as a woman, especially in an industry mm -hmm. that's predominantly male, mm -hmm. and can go after something mm -hmm. and be like, I'm going to do mm -hmm. this. So then from that step, wherein mm -hmm. did you go? Um, well, after that, uh, I mean, I talked to Daphne Cleveland at Boom, who's um, just the most wonderful editor. Uh, I mean, she's really a tremendous person. And she knew that I was just, you know, so passionate about this show. And the other projects had come from a place of, you know, admiring a character's legacy or coming um, from, you know, like, the, like this really keen desire to tell a specific story. And for Sleepy Hollow, a lot of it just came from really sincere fangirl love. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and so she knew how much I cared about um, like the, this this TV show and how invested I was in the fandom. And so she asked, you know, would I be interested in pitching for it? And I mean, I could not have said yes. I feel like enough. I'm in disbelief for you, like putting myself in the position, like, oh my God, it's I like mean, your wildest dream mm -hmm. comes true in an instant. Yeah, I mean, that I says so a lot shocked. to your talent, though. <laughs> Honestly, it does, because I mean, who gets in that fast into something so big like just I really their appreciate own. it oh my gosh we appreciate it because look what you're bringing to the industry that's tremendous mm -hmm. and what I love about it is Sleepy Hollow is such mm -hmm. a dark story yes. and you're like a little bubble of sunshine <laughs> you're like the blonde curly hair and the pink dress and so adorable and it's like the idea that you're writing for this tremendously dark story again emotional so, vivisection is know. coming just prepare yourselves <laughs> so living through vicariously mm -hmm. through this mm -hmm. story so then moving um forward mm -hmm. Butterfly mm -hmm. which is a four uh, mm -hmm. issue mm -hmm. series. Okay, yes. so tell uh -huh. us a little bit about that. Um, Butterfly is a, is a spycraft story and it's really about um, this father and daughter who were both tapped by the same um, organization that focused on international espionage and her father came from this, this Cold War era and this Cold War mentality where it was very brutal and very physical and then, uh, you know, 20 odd years later she um, comes from the post 9-11 War on Terror era where everything is digital, everything is subtlety, everything is, um, it's not about being a secret agent, it's about being an actor, it's about losing yourself so entirely within a role that there isn't even a core trace of you left, there's no detection. Um, and, you know, the ways in which these two ideologies and these two systems of warfare wind up clashing against each other um, as they, they are pitted each against each other and have to come to terms with, like, the trauma that they've inflicted on one another um, using these two systems um, and pressing forward to actually uh, go against their actual enemies. Wow, that's tremendous. <laughs> and that launches... Mm -hmm. Uh -huh, yes, yeah, September 24th. Yes, exactly, this <laughs> month. So that's something that we can mm -hmm. look at for. And then also Sleepy Hollow mm -hmm. is doing a four-issue uh -huh. series yes, as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, and that starts that. October. Mm -hmm. Gosh, you're a busy lady, <laughs> i got to tell you. So I do have a question for you related uh -huh. to the females in the industry. So we see, and I know you said you were on a panel mm -hmm. about sexiness earlier today. Mm -hmm. So is it 
Um, when you're thinking of female characters in mm -hmm. the industry, we've got the super sexy characters, mm -hmm. then we got the super smart characters, mm -hmm. then they've got the ones that they try to blend mm -hmm. the two together. Yeah. What is your supreme female character mm -hmm. that you think of that you'd like to see more of? Do you think it's like mm -hmm. they have to be smart or sexy mm -hmm. for people to understand it? Or do you think that there's a way mm -hmm. to put them together or one will always be ignored? It almost, or for me, it always comes honestly from a place of authenticity. I mean, that you want to express, you know, all different kinds of personalities, all different um, forms of womanhood and identifications of womanhood. And so, you know, you have uh, characters who are vulnerable or who are tremulous, and you have characters who are brazen and who are ferocious. Um, you have, you know, characters who are clever. You have characters who are naive. As long as there's, you know, a spectrum, we just need more women. You know, it, I feel like a lot of it becomes that we have so few characters that we hold them to these impossible standards. They have to represent every form of womanhood. And it makes it impossible and it makes it, it inaccessible because you're turned off by reading only about someone who has to be entirely flawless or when they are flawed or flawed in such cliched ways. And so, um, you know, the big thing for me is do they have a distinct personality? You know, is this someone that I could see existing in the real world? Someone, you know, with virtues and foibles, just the same as any other person. Um, and so the place of sexiness, the place of intelligence, as long as it feels real, you know, that this is an identification that someone, you know, could choose for themselves, as opposed to being created to, you know, fulfill an archetype or fulfill a quota. I gotta tell you that I can see why you've been so successful in this industry. Because first of all, as a writer, you alliterate yourself immensely well. But then additionally, is it's like you've got such a good head as far as like mm -hmm. as a woman speaking to mm -hmm. you, is like you really got mm -hmm. it because not many women can take that whole spectrum of woman and put it together. So it just makes me want to read everything that you write. Well, in fact, I'm gonna throw a quote you. at you that uh -huh. actually is from you. That oh, I read on Newsarama last year when the Batman annual came mm -hmm. out, and that's when reading about mm -hmm. character in Barbara Gordon, mm -hmm. where I thought it was such a great quote where mm -hmm. you said more subtly, as I think Batman is about obsession more than justice, and Aquaman is about humanity more than responsibility, in my own little opinion, Barbara Gordon is about recovery. Mm -hmm. Recovery in the sense of healing from traumas, both mental and physical, and mm -hmm. you go on. But I think that mm -hmm. that's such a great point about you, and I encourage all of our Comic Wow viewers to learn more about Marguerite <laughs> Bennett, and you know, check us out, obviously, on Comic Wow, where mm -hmm. you can find it out. But check out her writing, because this woman, especially to my female fans out there, <laughs> she knows what she's talking about in here. And is there anything that you would mm -hmm. like to say just directly to your fans and mm -hmm. let them know something you'd like them to know mm -hmm. about you or your work mm -hmm. directly just thank you so much i mean y'all are the ones that i'm writing for and i wouldn't be here without you so well, thank, thank you thank you so much marguerite we thank appreciate you. your time mm -hmm. enjoy the rest of the con mm -hmm. and remember you can find out more about marguerite bennett on comicwild.com mm -hmm. you're welcome mm -hmm.